In this video I'm gonna show you my new film camera and I'm also gonna talk about why I started shooting film again in 2020. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. I published my first official <laughs> video covering film cameras and film topics about two weeks ago and um, I got such a great positive response from you guys thank you so much that I decided to uh, continue making this uh, content on my channel from now on I'm gonna publish uh, at least one but probably two uh, videos each month covering film cameras and film topics and I was going to call this uh, series uh, unplugged but then I realized that YouTube's algorithms probably don't fully understand it because unplugged is usually associated with music videos so I have to come up with a new name and uh, talking about that name if you have a good suggestion for me, please put it down in the comment section. And um, if I like your suggestion and I use it, I'll send you a little reward. I'm gonna print you one of my favorite uh, film photographs and I'm gonna sign it and I'll send it to you wherever you live. But let me first start by explaining why I started using film again in 2020. It may seem a bit strange because um, there's nothing new in there for me. Be I have used film a lot, um, I mean really a lot. I, I used it uh, professionally for about 20 years. And if you compare digital and analog camera features, digital camera pretty much wins hands down. It's not even a contest. With a digital camera, you can share your images uh, right away, you have the instant feedback and you can shoot uh, 7000 images on one memory card. You can change your ISO value and the white balance uh, anytime you want. And the image quality is, is better. If you want the cleanest and sharpest pictures, digital wins every time. But there are also some things in photography that you can't really measure or you can't put them on, um, on a scale from 0 to 10 or something. And those things are uh, more uh, like what you feel when you are shooting and how the camera feels in your hand and how, the, how you like the tonality of your camera or the film you are using and uh, how uh, pleasurable is the shooting experience in general. You can't measure those things. I find that the old-fashioned film camera gives me nice balance to my digital shooting. And it's also really nice that today I can choose if I use film or digital. If I one day feel like uh, I need that instant feedback or I, for some reason I want to share the pictures I shoot right away or if it's a job it's probably too impractical to use film anymore because mo in most cases the client wants the pictures uh, in a hurry anyway. But when I shoot for myself um, the film offers me more tranquil experience and um, it's uh, much more like uh, peaceful and easygoing experience. Even when I shoot on my digital Lumix camera, I usually have the back display tucked away so that I can't see it and I don't chimp a lot. But sometimes the temptation to chimp is just too much and I, you know, peek a little bit what I just shot. And I don't shoot a lot even on my digital cameras. I'm pretty careful before I hit the shutter. But with the film camera, I've, I'm even more careful. And especially uh, with uh, a fully manual camera like this Leica, I, when the, the, the shooting experience or the whole picture taking is uh, 
more like a mental practice in some ways. When I, at the same time when I focus, uh, which is not always so easy on a rangefinder camera, I, at the same time I'll, I also examine the scene like one more time and check that everything is uh, the way they should, they should be. And then I take the light reading and also then I evaluate the, the tonality of the scene and all that. And it's all, all of course, much more uh, slower than with a digital camera, but it's also more, like I said, more like a mental practice also. And um, I, I'm even more careful uh, than I am with my digital Lumix camera. And of course, I have no temptation to uh, chimp because it's impossible. And I think it's only good once I'm done with my picture, I hit the shutter, then I'm immediately ready for the next uh, picture and I have absolutely no uh, um, like a temptation to look what I just shot. But I still don't think I'm ever gonna go back and shoot only film because in some cases it's just too impractical. But the really good thing as I already said, is that today you can choose if you feel like shooting film or you have the time and you feel you need that uh, more tranquil mental experience when you shoot, then you can pick up your film camera and shoot some film. But if you feel like you are in a hurry or you just need that um, instant feedback, you just feel more digital, then you pick up your digital camera and shoot digital. That's the beauty of it today. Back when I started, of course, there was no such choice uh, in 1975 or so when I took my first pictures. So those are my reasons to shoot film occasionally and I hope I can share some of my nice experiences with you and also I hope I can inspire you to also maybe to pick up your film camera or start shooting film if you've never done it before. But now let's talk about this beautiful Leica M6 that I have in my hand right now. And the lens mounted on this Leica is the 50mm Sumilux uh, f1.4 lens. And uh, those of you uh, who are familiar with the Leica cameras know that Sumilux means their f1.4 uh, lens series. And the reason I chose this M6 for my second uh, film camera review or coverage and I really had a choice. I could uh, choose pretty much any camera I wanted and I'll explain that in a second. Well, the reason to choose the M6 is that uh, it's one of the most searched film cameras on YouTube and I also wanted to complete my Leica experience because this M3 that I used uh, is not working properly the shutter speeds are not accurate and I can't really get consist consistent exposures on this one. So I wanted to complete my Leica experience and uh, I got this beautiful Leica M6. So I can finish my Leica experience with this beautiful Leica M6 and I've already put a few rolls of uh, black and white through this camera and this works absolutely beautifully and it's a joy to use. And I'll have a full report uh, by the end of this month and I'll cover this camera more in detail in there. And before someone asks about this strap, this <laughs> strap is actually a Sony accessory that was given to me uh, a few years ago and uh, it just uh, fits really well with this Leica and I decided to use it uh, with this camera but it's not a Leica accessory it's a, a Sony accessory however I didn't buy this camera this is not mine the guys at camerastore.com very kindly loaned me this camera and they agreed to help me with my film topic videos Camerastore.com is based in Finland and they have a huge selection of all kinds of used film cameras. And uh, with their help I'm able to introduce you some, uh, probably some exotic cameras that are hard to find and very expensive. And I also can show you and introduce you some uh, 
more affordable options too. I'm not planning to cover only these really expensive cameras. This camera body, for example, goes for about 2,300 euros and the lens for about two grand. So this combination is not exactly cheap. So I, I'm also going to uh, show you some uh, more affordable film cameras uh, in the future and show how they work and show what kind of pictures they can make. So that's it this time. Now I'm gonna go out. It's a beautiful day out there and I'm gonna shoot some more film on this Leica M6. And you too, keep your camera active, make some great pictures on whatever camera you have, digital or film. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.